You're watching Telecom TV for Mobile World Congress 2018 in Barcelona. I'm joined now by Adrian Scrays, who is CTO at Etsy. Adrian, good to talk to you on Telecom TV again. When we last met at MWC a year ago, we were all surprised somewhat by the move from a, a large part of the industry that wanted to accelerate the standardization process for the next generation of cellular, wanted to bring it forward by six months. It's been achieved, and it's a tremendous accomplishment, but has there been a price that's been paid? Indeed, it has been achieved, Guy. I mean, the, it was a demanding task to shave six months off the development time for the 5G new radio working in non-standalone mode. Um, fortunately, we managed to achieve that by December. The ink was dry on the paperwork, and we did finish the standards for 5G NR in non-standalone mode. But that, as you say, that did come at a cost. Um, when I calculated the number of um, man days that were spent just within three GPP uh, standards committees, 75,000 delegate days were expended during 2017 on this task. That is an enormous amount of effort and that's a testimony to the industrial companies that provide that effort and the, the real um, emphasis they had on achieving that target. Moreover, when I look at the number of contributions that were made to 3GPP last year, that exceeded 100,000 contributions. Again, that's a testimony to the, um, the companies who provided all that intellectual input to achieve this acceleration. But of course, it, it comes at a further price that whilst we managed to take six months off the development of, of that achievement, we did have to push other matters to, to the side. So what we initially thought would be contained within release 15 will now be a slightly smaller subset because of the fact that we accelerated that, that delivery. So, as you say, so it's a phenomenal achievement so far, but there's a, a lot more still to come. Um, we complete release 15 this year, and then we start looking at the, the, the next phase of uh, 5G with release 16. Yes, it's not, it's not quite so serial as that. Um, we will finish release 15 in June of this year, but already we're starting to consider what should be in release 16. Well, of course, the features that were left out of release 15 will join the queue of work to be done in release 16, together with many other features which operators wish to see within that package of work. It's very clear that we will only have 18 months then to complete release 16 and, and we will not be able to, to achieve everything that is on that wish list. So between June and September there will be this prioritisation process. We will have to get an industrial input as to which of the features are of the highest priority and I suspect that there will be some very long hours of discussion before we conclude exactly what it is we want to contain within release 16. Where does this all leave LTE? Uh, you know, our big install base of, of, of LTE. Um, is LTE part to one side or is LTE part of the continuing process? Oh, it's very much part of the continuing process for many, many years to come. Uh, it's very unlikely that we will see um, new field entrants deploying 5G without any other radio networks to support that, at least in the, in the early instances. So the, the very first operators are using LTE as a complement to the LTE Advanced Pro networks that we, they have. And it's very important that we continue to improve LTE Advanced Pro. If you are attached to a 5G new radio cell, for example, and you're forced to drop back to an LTE Advanced Pro, you don't want the difference in performance to be that great that you get complaints from users. So it's important that we try and shrink the difference between the experience on a 5G new radio cell and an LTE Advanced Pro cell. So you will see that continued development of LTE Advanced Pro for many, many years to come. What about the work on the uh, network architecture and the systems? Um, Etsy is very engaged with a number of enabling technologies through the industry specifications groups, um, one of which, NFE. Um, a lot of interest, a lot of activity over the past few years. Have we got to a stage now where work on NFE is pretty much done, it's into an implementation phase? Um, yes, more or less. I mean, we've been working on NFE for a number of years now. When we first started that work within Etsy, it created a big bang and, and we saw a massive interest in the use of that virtualization technology. When you come to the show here two years ago, every booth had an NFE demonstration there. If you come to the show today, you won't see hardly any NFE demonstrations. 
simply because it's no longer necessary to demonstrate NFE as a capability. It's, it's actually embedded in just about everything you see here at the show. So it's become almost a, a done deal, if you like, that the future will be NFE based. When it comes to deployment itself, um, that might be a slightly different story. There is some uh, lag, if you like, between standards completion and deployment in the marketplace. I think so, two or three years ago, um, some analysts expected that there will be wholesale deployment of NFE across entire operators' organisations. We haven't seen that, but I'm not sure that we should be surprised at not seeing that. Now, another one of your groups that you, you've uh, recently launched is the Zero Touch, uh, Zero Touch Automation Group. Um, why the need to focus on that and consolidate information around Zero Touch? Well, I think that's been emphasised very well at this show here. Uh, there are many, many vendors here who are demonstrating uh, network slicing and the ability to deliver bespoke performance to end customers. There have been some very, very compelling presentations and demonstrations that I've seen here, but they're all based on a very complex mechanism of determining what it is you actually need to deliver to your customer. And if that is to be done by manual intervention, then it's really unsustainable in the longer term. So the, the entire thought process is that as we head towards bespoke delivery of network slices, that needs to be managed in a fully automated way without any human intervention. Hence the activity which we've kicked off in Etsy very recently, and like NFE, is attracting large, large interest. Now our industry continues to evolve. Um, how do we reconcile the need to, to, to maintain the standards-based approach um, for operators with the increasing interest in um, open source and, and a lot of these open communities that are, that are springing up in our industry? I think that's a very interesting point. If we look at the experience with GAIN with delivering network functions virtualization, it started as a standards activity in a traditional way. Um, very early on there were moves by some groups of industry to develop open source implementations uh, with the very good ambition to try and um, reduce the amount of time it takes to move from standards to deployment. Um, but actually what what we saw happen was so many of these open source activities created and to some extent it diluted the focus and, and it created a little bit of uncertainty. People weren't quite sure which branch of open source would be the one that would, would be successful in, in the end. What's happened now of course we see that um, focusing back into to one or two mainstream open source activities so I think you know, that we have a good way forward. But, but maybe that good intention of accelerating work by having open source running in parallel with standards didn't actually achieve exactly what it meant to achieve in the case of NFE. In terms of where, what we do next, I think we will see more and more use of open source for sure. Um, but we're a telco industry trying to deploy an IT mechanism and we're learning as we go along, I think. And, the important thing is that we do learn that from the, the lessons that we've learnt from, from the NFE story. Great. Well, Adrian, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure.